Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because someone asked me a couple of weeks ago, do I love Lexington? And my answer was no. <laughs> I'm sitting here with DeBron Thomas, a local musician, activist, I'm proud to say my friend. Um, you've had kind of a big week. You've been involved in two different events that dealt with race and geography mm -hmm. here in Lexington. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go backwards chronologically. Thursday night, you did a show out at Douglas Park. Mm -hmm. What is the significance of Douglas Park? So Douglas Park was founded in 1916 by uh, uh, freed slaves and it was actually established uh, it was like the first park in Lexington that was for black people it was for freed slaves and for people of color and over its history it you know it's kind of condensed in size a little bit but there at one point in time there was like a golf course and you know Ferris wheel and it was like a huge thing but the thing is, is that it's, there's a big gathering sense of community there I think the fact that um, Douglas Park is still a place that the community holds on to. I mean, like right before we were playing, there was a group, like a little church crew, that was set up on the stage and everything. And that's what that commu what this means to the community. It's it is a space. It's a space that people know about, and it's a space that people care about. So for me, being an outsider, being asked to do it, uh, is you know, it's it's one of the highest honors. Yeah. Pretty So the night before, mm -hmm. you had been out at Cheapside Park, which we were going to try and shoot this at Cheapside Park, mm -hmm. but uh, really packed and crowded today. What is the significance of Cheapside Park? So um, Lexington is home to like the second largest slave trade hub back in the day. Uh, right over here, there was a market. <laughs> I, the irony is that uh, over here now today they're selling vegetables and um, you know, they used to sell people. And people were bought and sold um, over here. Um, from a, you know, I'm, I'm a history buff, so I can appreciate the neighborhood being called Cheapside. Uh, I am I'm now hearing dissing, di uh, disagreeing things but the story from my understanding uh, and if I'm wrong then you know I apologize in advance but what I have been told is that uh, so you have Shore Street and you have Upper Street which is where we're sitting right here and Upper Street is where the higher class slaves that were sold the ones that were you know much more in shape much that had been bred to be to, you know, to perform specific tasks um, on Short Street, <clears throat> you had slaves that were older. Uh, some of them were, you know, injured, uh, and you know, you had kids and that kind of stuff being sold on that side that were not necessarily, you know, that might have had a preconditioned illness, uh, and so that they, they were the cheaper slaves. So and theoretically, <laughs> Cheapside Park is named Cheapside Park because that's where you can buy cheap slaves. So my issue with it is there's uh, you know, there's two statues here. Um, one is of uh, John C. Breckenridge, who was the uh, uh, vice president of the Confederacy, uh, and uh, Thomas Hunt Morgan, who was, or sorry, John Hunt Morgan. Thomas Hunt Morgan was his cooler nephew that moved to California uh, and was like a big uh, scientist. Uh, but John Hunt Morgan was a Confederate general, and you know. Um, very much a person who was for the uh, the selling and, and buying of, of, of people and um, the funny thing about John C. Breckenridge is that uh, John C. Breckenridge was actually uh, considered uh, tre uh, treasonous by the Confederacy because he defected from the Union to the Confederacy and then after the war was over went to uh, hi went to hide in Canada so this guy is not a hero and neither is John Hunt Morgan and so we so we've got and part of what take back so what you guys were doing on Wednesday was called Take Back Cheap Side. There's a hashtag that's yeah. around that. Yeah. And so the idea is get rid of these statues. There's no reason to be honoring these guys. Like you just said, they're not heroes. What they represent is specifically what they represent in context of where those statues are is a pretty heinous thing. 
so so what's what's the end game what's the goal well I will say before I answer your question that the back the ba- part of the backlash is people are saying well you're you know you, if you take them down you are um, you know you're you're not telling the whole story which I find ironic but here's the thing is these statues are there presented with no other documentation as to who these people are they are just there and uh, specifically the John Hunt Morgan statue was put up in the early 1900s by the daughters of the Confederacy uh, as a um, you know as a, as a part of the revisionist history because see Kentucky was not part of the uh, Confederacy Conf- Kentucky was a n- neutral state but that kind of lied more on the, the Union side. But as history will show you, we had both presidents of both sides were both from Kentucky. Jefferson Davis and Abraham Lincoln, respectively, were both from Kentucky. Um, so for me, uh, you know, seeing these things here is very similar to the Confederate flag being raised on uh, government buildings that were raised in the 1950s, uh, long after the war was over, um, as a slap in the face to the civil rights movement. Uh, For this particular thing, it's much more a slap in the face of uh, all the people that live in Lexington that have to walk past this and all the people in Lexington who hang out at this space and don't understand why it's important and why it's it's there. I think that's probably one of my questions. Like I said, we couldn't film over there because it's packed out. So Farmer's Market on Saturdays, Thursday Night Live, which is a big gathering, so thousands of people are in that space every week. Do you think most of them have any idea? Uh, honestly, like after we did the uh, the, the, the flash mob, um, there's a person that I know. Um, friend, one of my friends that was there posted this article that Tom Eblen, who is a writer here here in Lexington, um, wrote about the you know what Cheapside is. And uh, a guy that I know who you, who is a you know he's in the uh, the kitchen industry here in town, and he had no idea. And I know that there are plenty of people that don't know. And that's the that's like the worst part about it is there is a plaque over there that was put up by the Kappa Apa Psi fraternity. Um, as of right now, it is gone. Uh, apparently, it is under, it is being kept to be preserved while this construction is going on. But as you can see over here, these statues are still here. Uh, I don't really understand it's why. It's possible to preserve yeah. without taking it. Yeah. And, and Golden obviously wants the statues gone. Um, what, so if somebody's watching this, they're learning about uh, Chief Science history for the first time, they're like, well, yeah, that sucks. Mm-hmm. Let's get rid of them. What can people do? Uh, I think the best thing you can do is to r- continue to write, uh, post on social media, continue to speak, continue to have conversations about it. Write to uh, Jim Gray, write to you know your your certain uh, your city councilman, and let them know that this is something that's important to you. Because otherwise, these things are going to continue to stay up, and nothing's going to be done about it. My one of my goals, regardless of what happens, is that uh, I get as many different people working for this as possible. I'm not just trying to represent one particular group sure. because as, as a civil rights struggle, it matters to everyone. Right. Um, and m- a bunch of different people are going to be able to say and do a lot more than one particular group of people. It's going to take, it takes a village. And just, just as Lexingtonians, is that, are these the guys we want to be lionizing in, our, in the middle of our town and saying, hey, these are, these were our founders. These, yeah. you know, there's, yeah, I mean the courthouse over here on uh, on Limestone was built by an African American's uh, uh, architecture firm, and their names are inscribed on the stones on the inside. But there's no statue of them here, and there's no statue of any Union generals. Yeah. I mean, if anything, you know, at least get some equal representation. If, if they came to you and they said, "Debron, we're going to replace the statue with the person of your choice, and it can't be Bernie Worrell," <laughs> who would who would you put up there? Man, I don't know. Uh, well, if it, I, I would say, you know, I would, I would say Isaac Murphy maybe, but honestly, like Frank X Walker is probably one of my favorite people yeah. on the planet, yeah. and he's done a lot for this. You know, he's done a lot for the state, and you know, he's done a lot for Lexington. Um, but there are also a bunch of other people that. Should, I mean, really, anybody but these two <laughs> would be would be a so, you know. so I could like it could be a statue of me yeah and it, and that would be a yeah yeah perfect yeah. yeah 
I'm gonna start loving. Just don't get on a horse. Just don't sit on a horse that's a ma that's a male horse, because people are gonna want to paint the testicles. Oh, did they do that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a th it's a thing. And and the funny thing about that is that the horse that he rode in on in this particular story was a mare, anyways. So you really you do know you uh, I right down to the genitals. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, sometimes you just got to get to the balls of the problem. <laughs> It's funny because someone asked me a couple of weeks ago, do I love Lexington? And my answer was no. Uh, I love the community here and I love, um, you know, the fact that I can, you know, that there's, that there's, that the community supports itself, yeah. right? You know, if somebody's in trouble and they're going to have a benefit for something, you know, people rally behind it. Um, but after Wednesday, um, I was kind of proven wrong that, you know, that people do care about this. Um, people do care about, you know, wanting to, to to see progress. So I do love Lexington, and as a as a person of color, um, it has been really tough. I mean, part of why I wanted to do this was I've been talking about civil rights issues since I was like 15. Well, no, more like since I was like 13, and I learned about Emmett Till. Um, and everything kind of seemed to catalyze in 2012 after Trayvon Martin was killed. Uh, and, you know, I'm just tired of having to make a Facebook post every time this happens. I'm tired of making posts when things don't happen and people telling me, oh, well, that's not happening. You know, um, so at this point, I, I'm much, uh, much more wanting to do something. And I know I can't do it alone. Uh, but there are a lot of people here who do want to do something who might just be afraid. Uh, but, you know, what I would say to them is, you know, you don't need to be afraid because you're not the only one. I learned that myself. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it, it's, it's going to take, take a lot of people uh, to make change, but we have to stand together and stand united. And, you know, if we're all, if it's like, you know, 2,000 people that are really, really loud, you can't just put in headphones and ignore that. Thank you.